U.S. Treasury says Vietnam not a currency manipulator. And later on, the role of small and medium-sized enterprises in the growth of the Vietnamese economy. Hello there, you're tuning into another edition of BizLine on VTV International. I'm your host Hoàng Hằng, and as Vietnam bids farewell to the year of the peak, we will now review some top highlights wrapping up a positive year for economic development in Vietnam. The U.S. Treasury recently published a report on macroeconomic and foreign exchange policies on major trading partners of the United States. The report does not label Vietnam as a currency manipulator, but retains the country in the monitoring list alongside nine others. Vietnam is kept on the list as the Treasury found it violated only one of the criteria, which is a bilateral trade surplus. Vietnam's current account surplus is only approximately 1.7%, lower than the 2% threshold. In response, the State Bank of Vietnam issued a statement saying it will continue working with relevant ministries and departments to monitor exchange rates and its monetary policy. Vietnam's trade surplus to the CPTPP countries reached nearly 4 billion US dollars in 2019, accounting for 40% of total trade surplus. It is supposed to be one of the remarkable figures one year after CPTPP has taken effect. Export to various CPTPP countries increased sharply, including Canada, Mexico, and Peru. Textile, footwear, and fisheries have been evaluated as being able to take good advantage of the CPTPP. But in 2019, these industries still had to import a lot of raw materials. This year, the customs sector aims to exceed the budget revenue by 5%. In addition, it will be striving to prevent smuggling and especially trade fraud in order to protect domestic products. In 2019, the General Department of Custom budget revenue reached about 15 billion US dollars and increased by more than 16% of its projected figure. Custom forces have discovered and handled over 17,300 infringement cases involving illegal goods worth a total of more than 129 million US dollars. In 2020, the customs sector will continue to promote administrative reforms, enhance export activities, and strengthen anti smuggling and fraud. Expert forecasted that total international container volume at domestic ports will continue growing by 6 to 7% in 2020, with the growth part starting with FDI enterprises. This is the same growth rate as in 2019. According to SSI analysts, domestic transport continued to witness competitive prices last year, while international transport saw a slight rebound in tariffs. Regarding the prospect of the market in 2020, many people think that this year, seaport companies will likely grow weakly. Seaport revenue growth is estimated at only 3 to 5% and profit growth will not change in 2020. The General Department of Taxation recently announced that from July the 1st, 2020, the amended tax administration law will take effect. This would assist the tax authorities in the fight against tax evasion. FDI corporations that keep reporting losses will be on the inspection list. Taking Coca-Cola as an example, although the sales rate increases yearly, the enterprise has always reported a loss. Metro Cash and Carry Vietnam and Big C were also discovered committing wrongdoings worth 190 million US dollars in a transfer pricing inspection. 77 agreements on double taxation and exchanging data were signed to prevent these illegal acts. Only a few days left until the Lunar New Year. Now is the time when prices of commodities begin to rise, especially food products. According to information from the Ministry of Industry and Trade, prices of date products often increase by 10 to 15 percent and people's purchasing power also increased by 15 to 20 percent. Before and after Tet holidays, prices of several items might increase by up to 30 percent, such as vegetables, fruits and food and beverage services. 
The price of live hogs has decreased by about 86% per kilogram compared to the peak price increase at the end of 2019. In the coming days, airlines will add nearly 16,000 flights, equivalent to nearly 6 million seats on both domestic and international routes, to serve passengers during the date holiday. Earlier, the aviation department asked airlines to increase flights during the peak Lunar New Year, especially from January the 20th to the 31st. Airlines also recommend passengers to arrive early for at least two hours before departure. Passengers should check in online to save time and avoid congestion at the airport. Those are the top economic highlights in Vietnam's economic scene. Up next in our crosstalk, we will look at the role of SMEs in the Vietnam's economy growth in recent years. Thirty years witnessed the impressive development of the small and medium-sized enterprises in Vietnam. Currently, there are about 1.3 million SMEs registered nationwide. Of these 1.3 million SMEs, about 750,000 are operating. In terms of the industry structure, about 43% of SMEs are operating in manufacturing, 24% in trade and distribution, the rest are in service and related to agriculture. However, about 85% of Vietnamese SMEs have capital of less than 250,000 US dollars and employ 50 employees. Small and medium-sized enterprises play a very important role in creating jobs. About 8 million jobs have been created by the SME sector for the Vietnamese people. Compared to the number of jobs created in the informal sector, these 8 million jobs are of higher quality because they have social security coverage. With an estimated contribution of about 10% to the country's exports from 52,000 SMEs, the potential of Vietnamese SMEs in contributing to the export sector is still very large. Small and medium-sized enterprises are contributing about 8% to Vietnam's gross domestic product. We just watched a clip capturing highlights and impressive figures of the small and medium-sized enterprises or the SME sector in Vietnam. From the clip, we see that SMEs play an important role in creating jobs, reducing poverty, raising labor's income, contributing to state budget and developing the economy. To have a better understanding of the role of SMEs in the Vietnam's economy, we invited to our studio today economist Lê Duy Bình, Managing Director of Economica Vietnam, uh, who has had many in-depth studies about the topic. Welcome to Bizline. Yeah, thank you. What are the contributions of the SME sector to Vietnam's economic growth in 2019? In 2019, uh, we can see that uh, we achieved a very high economic growth uh, of 7%. And this uh, growth rate of 7% would not have been possible without the contribution of the SME sector. Uh, you see that in 2019, uh, uh, there was uh, 138,000 SME being registered. And uh, these 138,000 SME registered to invest about uh, 75 billion US dollars into the economy. And it is uh, double, it is uh, twice as much as it used to be four or five years ago uh, by the SME sector. And also, uh, if you compare with the FDI commitment uh, in the same year, it is almost double the amount of FDI commitment in the economy in 2019. So we see that the contribution of the SME is very important in terms of mobilizing the resources, the scarce resources that is capital uh, in the economy and put them into effective use, into productive use. And it plays a very important role in contributing to economic growth in, uh, 2000, uh, in 2019 and also in the years to come because it paved the foundation for the future growth. And also in 2019, and we see that uh, SME also created about 1.3 million new jobs for the economy. And it is really important in terms of job creation. 
And each year now we need about 1.6 million new jobs. So SME is really creating 80% of the new jobs for the, for, 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 for the, uh, the, the demand for the jobs in the market. You cannot expect the state-owned enterprise sector or the FDI sector to create much job for the, for the economy and for the young people of uh, 1.6 million new jobs every, every year. And if an economy, we look, uh, job creation is a very important indicator because it is uh, very important for economic growth and also important for social stability and progress. Are there any contributions that you think it's worth mentioning besides job creations? SME is now creating more and more business uh, in the country and then they contribute also uh, in terms of um, social security because you see that 8 million people and uh, working for the SME by now and they're all in the formal sector and we are contribute, they are contributing to social progress, to social security coverage and that is a very important target of our government also. SME is also creating to um, um, contribute to the creation of an ecosystem of the business sector in Vietnam in which the SOE, the FDI enterprise and the private sector SME are coexisting, and that would be very important for the futures of Vietnam, uh, especially if you wanted to have a very vibrant uh, uh, business uh, sector in Vietnam. SME is also contributing a lot to innovation to technology transfer and also to improve the business certification of Vietnam and also to improve the productivity of Vietnam. This company launched three years ago, it made a bold move to invest in a processing line capable of producing 200 tons of tea per year. Thanks to its connection with tea farmers, the company is able to ensure every step in its production meets Viet Gap and Global Gap standards. Có nhiều cái mối liên kết. Trong đấy cái mối liên kết đầu tiên là uh, sẽ thuê lại cái ruộng của họ để chúng tôi tiến hành chăm sóc theo cái quy trình của tôi. Đấy, cái liên kết thứ hai là liên kết là mà tôi sẽ cung cấp một số vật tư nguyên liệu như phân bón, như là các cái thuốc bảo vệ thực vật để chúng tôi thu mua lại hàng của họ. Nếu mà mình liên kết mà mình cung cấp phân bón vật tư cho họ thì mình sẽ chủ động trong cái nguyên liệu hơn. These SME developed products that meet international demands and improve the value chain of their tea products. Instead of only exporting raw tea ingredients at low prices, in 2019 their tea products were well received when reaching American customers for the first time. It's very good, it's light, um, it's refreshing, I really like it. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, by the end of 2019, Vietnam had over 50,000 small and medium-sized enterprises participating in 1,400 agricultural production chains. This helps enhance the quality of Vietnamese agricultural products to meet the demands of foreign markets and for these products to join global agricultural value chains. Cái vai trò của các doanh nghiệp là đầu đàn dẫn dắt liên kết trong chuỗi nông nghiệp. Họ là những người có vốn, có kinh nghiệm quản trị trong nước và quốc tế nên họ có cái điều kiện là ứng dụng công nghệ cao vào trong sản xuất nông nghiệp. Họ hướng dẫn, họ đào tạo Họ dẫn dắt những người dân làm của chúng ta sản xuất cái hàng hóa nông nghiệp theo những cái tiêu chuẩn quốc tế. With the vision to 2030, Vietnam expects to be among the world's top 10 countries in agricultural processing. For this to be a reality, the SME sector plays a vital role and is key to improving the competitiveness of the Vietnamese agricultural products. Now looking a bit broader, how is the domestic SME sector compared to other ASEAN nations? In ASEAN, um, Vietnam in recent years is only second only to Indonesia in terms of number of SME that is operational. And it's also only second to Indonesia only in terms of jobs being created by SME. But in terms of growth rate in SME, and we are one of the, I think that we can be proud to say that we are among the top of the ASEAN country 
in the growth rate of SME in ASEAN. For example, like uh, in the last three years, the number of SME being registered or being created in Vietnam always over 120,000 SME. And last year, we already achieved the number of 138,000 SME being registered in one year. And it is much, much higher than many other, other ASEAN countries. So for them, like in Malaysia, this number is only about 35,000 SME being registered in a year. In Myanmar, uh, emerging uh, economy in ASEAN, this number is only 15,000. So we are growing quite fast in terms of numbers. And with this growth, and it can also bring the density of SME, what we call the SME density, that is the number of SME per 1,000 people in one country. And now we already reached this uh, density rate of um, 11.5 SME per 1,000 people in Vietnam. And we are almost reaching to the average uh, of the ASEAN countries of 16 uh, SME per 1,000 people. So in terms of number, and we are growing quite fast. But if we look at the other respect, for example, like the quality of development, that is an issue. Our SME is still far more smaller than SME, average SME in other ASEAN countries. And the productivity of SME in Vietnam is still much lower. And our SME are more in the labor intensive industries. And our SME is much less technological advanced than other, SM, other ASEAN SME. And also the level of uh, internationalization of Vietnamese SME is still limited. And uh, the corporate governance in SME is also an issue. So uh, in terms of um, quality of development, and our SME sector is still lagging far behind many other ASEAN countries, especially the ASEAN 4. That is, um, we can look at uh, Singapore, we look at Malaysia, Thailand, or Indonesia, or the Philippines. In your opinion, what are the constraints of the SME sector? The financial performance is not as good. Uh, yeah, just last week, VCSI just disclosed a staggering figures that 60% uh, of our SME is running at loss or making no profit. That means that only 40% of them are making profit. And even the profitability of the SME Vietnam is quite low. It is only about 7% or 8%, the rate on equity uh, the return on re equity of the SME in Vietnam is only 7 to 8% per year. So it is much lower than the banking lending interest rate. So it discourages SME from investing further, uh, in, uh, further because the investment rate is low. So it also deter the capital accumulation of the SME. It also deter the um, prevent SME from investing into research and development, investing in upskilling the workforce and in investing in technology. More chances have been unveiled for Vietnamese enterprises in supporting industry as Samsung Vietnam plans to increase the number of its tier 1 suppliers to 50 in 2020. On display were products from 31 Vietnamese SMEs. Họ đang muốn một cái nguyên vật liệu cung ứng để cho sản phẩm của họ. Thứ nhất là là nó thân thiện với môi trường về phần bao bì giấy, về phần sản phẩm nhựa thì khay nhựa chúng tôi cũng hướng đến cái vật liệu nguyên sinh. Lệ lỗi của Samsung đưa ra là 0.5% thì chúng tôi đang đang là đạt được là 0.3, tức là sản lượng lỗi sản phẩm lỗi rất là ít. According to Samsung representative, rather than importing components, expanding local supplier network will help save time and cut costs. Price, product management and quality are the key elements we are looking for in our suppliers. Besides, their products also need to comply with international standards and law and environment and labor safety. The Ministry of Industry and Trade has organized several training and consultancy on deeper integration into global supply chain to enhance capacity for local enterprises. Well, can you elaborate?
elaborate more on the linkage of uh, SMEs with uh, the global supply chain and the FDI sector and also state-owned enterprises? This is one of the weakest um, weakness of the SME in Vietnam. The linkage with the international and global supply chain is really an issue because um, few SME can really work as a subcontractor for international suppliers or few of them is now selling directly to international MNC, uh, multinational companies, or they are or investing abroad. So this is the definition of international linkage of the SME. Mm -hmm. So few SME are doing just that. So um, that, uh, most of the SME is now working in isolation and they are focusing on producing that is uh, some unsophisticated product which is labor intensive and don't need uh, that much uh, technology, and don't need that much uh, high level of capital. So the linkage with the international uh, MNC is very important for them to improve this one. And according to a survey by Zacho, that is a Japanese uh, trade promotion agency in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and they said that about uh, Japanese uh, companies here in Vietnam just buy, uh, just source about 32% uh, from the Vietnamese uh, companies. And it is much lower than the rate in China, which is about 70% or in Thailand of about 60% or Indonesia of 40%. So the linkage with uh, foreign invested enterprise with the global supply chain is limited. But um, even worse than that, that is the linkage between the private sector SME and the SOE, the state-owned enterprise, which is supposed to be the leading uh, sector of the uh, economy is also weak. I think this is also an area that need to be improved. SOE. Uh, for some reasons, they should um, promote the linkage with the domestic uh, SME because it is beneficial for both the SOE and also for the local SME. What can you say about the opportunities for this sector? Our economy is growing quite uh, well in the last two or three years. And this uh, good growth rate and the high growth rate is uh, an opportunity by itself because uh, the, when the economic uh, growth happens and then it can also expand the local market for SME uh, products and services. So we, we also see that it's also an emerging middle income uh, class that is emerging thanks to this economic growth and they demand for more and more products and services. So we can see that a lot of SME is now catering uh, to this uh, demand from the middle income class. So domestically, we see that there is an expanding market for, for SME nationwide. It is not only in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh, Da Nang, or the major city, but we can see that also in, 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 in other provinces, secondary development cities, uh, that we call it. And uh, the opportunity is there from the domestic market, but also from outside. We see that we already signed about 12 trade agreements now, and uh, we also have the, most recently, we also have the CTPPP, the EVFTA, and it broadened a huge market for Vietnamese SME. And if they can really uh, see this uh, opportunity, that would be very great for, for SME development in the future. So we see that uh, in last year, many of SME are already catching up with this. And also that Vietnam is also now emerging as one of the destination for investment and investment would come in into Vietnam and many of them would invest into existing SME in Vietnam or they could put uh, the development of the SME uh, sector in Vietnam for them in the uh, innovation or startup or innovative industry or creative industry. The 1999 Enterprise Law is a very important law for the development of small and medium-sized enterprises. It has helped SMEs grow exponentially in recent years, the government has issued new regulations and policies to support SMEs. The most recent example is the law on supporting small and medium-sized enterprises, which has introduced many specific programs to help businesses, such as support for innovative startups, on business management skills, and formalization process for SMEs. These supports are being translated into concrete actions by local authorities. There are also other indirect support of the government, such as the implementation of Resolution No. 2 to reform the business environment in Vietnam. 
So what do you think about the prospect of the SME development in the future? I mean, its contribution to economic growth and also social development as well. Um, SME should become the mainstay of the national economy. FDI is very important, but uh, we should not too much be too much dependent on FDI sector. The prospect for SME development in Vietnam is very bright. Bright because uh, we have a very a great entrepreneurship of the Vietnamese people. If we uh, see around in the regions, I think that uh, we can be proud that the entrepreneurship of Vietnamese people is really strong, tremendous. And if we can unleash this, I think that it can contribute a lot to national economic growth in Vietnam. So SME uh, would uh, be the vehicle for them to realize these ambitions and become well up and contribute to the prosperity of the economy of the country and of the social progress in the so this we can be very you know, confident about the future of SME in Vietnam and uh, we can see that SME will continue to contribute to job creations contribute to creating the wealth for the nations and SME would uh, become the main factors for competitiveness of Vietnam if we look at countries like uh, Germany or Finland or Sweden, for example, they don't uh, have a large number of SMEs, but they are very proud to have a uh, top-notch SME in the world who produce a top-notch product, highly sophisticated, uh, very um, highly sophisticated technological uh, product, for example. So the most innovative SME in the world, we can do just these things uh, in Vietnam. But these things, uh, uh, this uh, perspective, uh, uh, prospect would not come by itself. It needs to be supported by the right government policy uh, to support the SME to develop further. But uh, we think that if there is a will, there is a way. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining our Beesline program. Thank you very much. According to our latest update, the Ministry of Planning and Investment is working on a draft national program to provide a total financial support of 5,000 billion Vietnamese dong or 216 million US dollars for small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs being innovative startups or participating in industrial clusters and value chains during the 2021-2025 period. This is a good news for the sector and hopefully we will see the SME sector in Vietnam thrive moving forwards. And that also wraps up this edition of BizLine. In the meantime, you can log on to our official website at vtv4.vtv.vn or visit our YouTube channel at vtv4go for more news and updates. Goodbye for now and until next time.